what we're gonna do today, well here, maybe I'll kind of explain, actually Eric, why don't you explain what the, what the, um, what happens when you want to go from this to a finished bed? Sure. So this is cauliflower and cauliflower is kind of a messy crop where you're going through and you're just hacking away and you get one cut, one head. And so you're leaving a lot of debris. It's, it's getting kind of beat up as it's growing. You're stuff on things. So by the time this is done, it's a mess. Um, so we have two drip lines on there, so we need to remove those. So we'll unhook them from the, the valves, and we've got to try to work them out as best we can. Even though there's the mulch, we can leave that, but we need to get the drip lines out because this will get all tangled up and make a mess. So we're going to get those out, and then we're ready to flail, really. And this looks like a lot of crop residue to be shredding with something like this. It does a really good job. It's a powerful machine. Um, sometimes you'll start to feel it bogged down if it's really dense stuff or if it's really wet which this has a lot of dew on it so in that case you would just go offset and you could do like shred half a bed and then the other half a bed as opposed to going right on the center um and that but uh, it still is gonna it's gonna go real quick so we're gonna shred this all down um and the way the flail mower works it's, it's not like a it doesn't have a blade like a lawn mower it has a an axle that's spinning and and if you're if you're curious just come and look it's kind of neat there are these little, it's, there's a central axle, and then it's like a flail, like a medieval flail. And so there's blades that are on a hinge, and or on a, on a hinge point, and they, they flail around. So it's like, they're just flying all over the place. And it just mulches things down, and you're, you're gonna be amazed. Like that looks like a lot of organic matter. You're gonna be amazed on how quickly it disappears. So see these, these oh, just okay. flare around like that. That's why it's called a flail mower. So it's the whacking yeah. motion does a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. So Got it's it. it's different than a, a mower, which is a, a horizontal spinning blade with a with a vertical axis. This is a vertical spinning blades that flail on a horizontal axis. Yeah. So not only does it mow, but it mulches. Mm -hmm. You couldn't mow a lawn with this, right? right? It's not going to give you that accuracy. This is meant to just shred stuff. So like you would go through a field of weeds with this, and then if you yeah you if you wanted to yeah 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 like yep. a long gator. Yep. And the neat thing about it too is that because the way this this what happens is this front end piece pushes things down, so you can literally walk through brush that's six yeah. eight feet tall and, and shred it, it into mulch. Whereas a normal mower that that would never work, right? because this just attacks it no matter which way it lays. So, and then there's a roller underneath it, uh, which just kind of pushes, pushes things back down to the ground. And so, you know, before, <coughs> before I, like I, I don't really use a flail mower because I don't grow crops like this, but we used to on our farm. We would have to manually move, like move that stuff before a flail mower. <laughs> we would go in and pull these plants out, put them in the compost, then we go in and do our bed prep. The flail mower makes it so that you can keep the organic matter in place by not moving it, because that's just extra work, and you also get the benefit of that decomposing on the soil. Right, so that's, that's, that's great in organic farming to do that. The more organic matter you have to move back and forth, the more work you're doing that isn't paying. And it's, this kind of farming is really all about maximizing the things that do that create value and minimizing the things that don't. So you're creating value doing this because you're, you're, you're building your soil up. It's another way this pays for itself. It does. It really does. Like on this kind of farm with this scale, this, I, I would say this tool is a must. Yeah, I wouldn't do it without. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. So why don't we so, pull yeah. some lines out? Or, yeah, so the way ahead. we have to pull the lines, and I'll explain it in theory, but like it doesn't always work that way. So, But we want you all just to like get in there and get at it because it's, it's not going to work. So... In theory, what we'd love for it to do is to be able to pull from one side or the other and it would slide out from underneath, right? That would be great. Right. Um, it sometimes works that way, but sometimes it doesn't also. So first we're going to disconnect all these valves so the lines are free. And we need to pull them from one to one side or the other. So I think we should pull, we'll pull towards the dirt road. And so what we call, we always have somebody making, that's the corner basically. So you're going to have people pulling and walking back in here and freeing it up. And then we're, there's going to be people pulling. 
and somebody's gonna be that corner. So as they're pulling out, they're helping make that turn, right? They're using their body, their leg for that drip line to make that turn. Otherwise you have to have a really long place to pull. Yeah. So we're gonna pull all these out and we're just gonna set a nice long uh, you know, stack of these drip lines kind of parallel to the road over here on this side. The flail mower will ride right on the ground. You don't have to maintain any sort of that, that roller setting the height. So you can just let it do its thing. It's going to bounce around a little bit. You just try to keep it straight. And pretty, just kind of, you're going to walk behind it. If you want to not stand in the bed, it's not as critical as this step. Although, our general rule is never try to walk through bed. So we can offset the handlebars so we can walk in the furrows while we're going. When we get to the ends, we're just not able to get close enough. So we'll just turn short of those and then we can make one pass this way to clean up that edge and then we're going to find more stuff like these bits that we're laying down as we we're going so we'll do a little touch up yeah. pass on some of this when we're all what, done what i do with this if if i don't have like five or six beds like this and there's the ends i just pull the ends out and throw them in there because yeah. sometimes you might only be doing two beds at a time and it's if you're next to other beds kind of hard to do that run along the end yep so so you guys can give it a whirl. <clears throat> We're gonna want to do the the harrow afterwards because we still have some root matter still in there that this isn't gonna take care of. So that's gonna help break that up as well. I just wanted to explain one thing. Not all of you heard this. Uh, what I do when I'm running the machine, if I have the handlebars like this and I'm walking along, so here's my walkway and I'm going along, when I get to the end, you go back. Like you can't lift the BCS when the, the handles are off kilter. So you go like this. If I'm ever running this machine for a long time, what I end up doing just to save myself labor is like, just save myself movements is I run the handlebars straight all the time. I get it going and then I just go like this and I just let the machine work, do the work. When you're flailing this heavy of a crop, it might be harder to do that because it does, it might require a bit more, you know, you holding. But when you're doing work like some of the other implements will run, you'll see that machine mostly just does everything. All you're doing is guiding. And and they're easy just to, you can literally just do that. Your, your hand is barely on there. You're just holding the clutch and you're just, you're just going. We're trying to churn up and tear up all those roots basically with this now that we've flailed on top. So they're gonna, we're gonna tarp after this, and then when he, so how long will that tarp sit here? Two to four weeks. This will be closer, like three to four weeks, because of just the amount. The time of, of year. Yeah. If it was, if it was summer, and you know, it wouldn't be cauliflower, but would you? Could it two weeks be enough? In Not the summer? for the cauliflower and broccoli. There's so much that has it's to break so down. So much. It just takes yeah. a long time. But if it was salanova yeah. or right. anything like that, no yeah. problem. And yeah. actually, if it was just the leaves, no problem. But like all those stalks, yeah, we want to break down as much as possible, which is why. We're not just flailing, but then we're harrowing, trying to knock those roots and tear that all out so it's not stuck, trying to live. Yeah. So your single pass with the harrow is just to start the root breakdown? Right? Yeah, we're just trying to shred everything one more, get into the soil. The flail mower's not getting into the soil. Yeah. If we just cut it, I mean, literally, it'll still try to like stay alive what's left of there. And we want to disrupt that as much as possible. Yeah. 